And we are live here with SCI TV. I'm Joshua Gordon, the founder of the Sports Conflict Institute. Today we take on a fun topic, which is roller derby. And so we have guests Annie Kilberg and some of the Rose City Rollers with her. Welcome. Hi. So I'm hoping you can all introduce yourselves and in addition to introducing your organization, maybe introducing our viewers a bit to the sport of roller derby because I think we have some ignorance out there when it comes to everything about your sport. So maybe a crash course would be a good way to start as well. Okay, well, um, I'll start with just my name. I'm Annie Kilberg. I'm working with the Rose City Rollers on their conflict management program. This I, is, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Heather, also known as Helvetica. Uh, I'm the volunteer manager for the league. Um, I'm Erin, but I go by Raven Mad Mahoney. And I play on the Fresh Meat program, I'm trying to get drafted onto a team right now. Great, welcome. So maybe, maybe before we get into specifics about your league and team and all of that, you could tell us a bit about the sport. Because I think I, I have a working knowledge at best, and, and I know my viewers may not be any better than I am. Okay, um, I can I can do that. Um, so. Roller Derby has played two teams, and each team at the beginning of a, a jam, which is two minutes long, has five players on the track each, four blockers each, and one jammer each. And um, the goal is for one jammer to get out first, and that jammer gets the lead. Both jammers score points after they pass the, they go around the whole pack and start to pass opposing teammates. Uh, t uh, opposing team players, they get points for each opposing player that they pass. Um, the point of being the first one out is that you can stop the jam prior to two minutes and hence keep the other, other player from getting any points at all. Um, so there's usually two half an hour, two halves, half an hour each, and um, the jams can go as many jams as fit into each of those half an hour blocks go on. Um, what makes the game um, more fascinating are all the different strategies and penalties that can be accrued during the time that you're playing. So you have to play safe and fair, and there's a lot of rules that people aren't aware of. You can't, there's no punching people and hitting each other, which is what a lot of times when you know you tell people you play roller derby, they're like, oh, you know, <laughs> you to beat each other up, and there's that's not what's going on out on the track. So, um, you know, you have to hit in legal zones and you have to stay in bounds and you can't cut other players. And so there's a whole bunch of that coming into play as you try to get through and score points on the other team. Can you think of anything Great. else? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the, the culture as well. Obviously, you have alternate names. What What is that? Um, you know, what's that all about? You know, are you guys entertainers and athletes, or what, what, tell, tell us a bit about, about all of that? Yeah, I think that I think that um, roller derby has sort of built itself up from um, more of an entertaining place. It was more of a entertaining sport, and now it's becoming more of a it is a full on sport sport. But those attributes that we had. Um, we've carried with us. We have our own names that we get to claim after we play it on a league for a certain number of time and getting that name, either coming up with it on your own or with your teammates, is there's a lot of pride in, in having that name and hearing it called out and announced at the beginning of every bout. And you know, some players really still love dressing up and using face makeup and and you know, really expressing themselves out there and yet still being a real athlete and and being a badass out there really. <laughs> Absolutely. So, obviously, it's a sport that that has some theater to it, and conflict at its root sometimes has some drama and all that. But but what? How do you differentiate between the type of issues that you may be dealing with that are just part of the sport and fun, and some other things that that maybe are things that need the type of help that we'll get into around conflict management? Well, I don't think there's much theater involved in the sport. At this point in time, I mean, everyone's out there playing as hard as they can to win, and it's really changing, and it's really athletic. I do think that when you're dealing with any kind of a sport, you're going to have conflicts amongst your teammates about who gets to play and who doesn't get to play, or maybe things that happen out on the track, um, things that happen amongst home teams. There are four teams that play against each other all season, and sometimes, you know, there's some little rivalries between them, and there's potential conflicts about how people treat each other on the track. 
Um, and that, that kind of thing happens, but it's not theater. I mean, there's just, there's rules, and there's rules sometimes get broken, and people get upset about it, and I have conflict over that. And, and before any got involved, what, what are some of the formal things you had in place? And then, and then Annie, I'd love to hear from you about how you how you became involved with the uh, Rose City Rollers and what you've been doing with them as well. Yeah. Okay. So any of the historical stuff will generally come to me. Uh, what we had prior to having any sort of mediation training was something called our Code of Conduct Committee, which really is supposed to deal with major infractions. So you really messed up and did something stupid. Um, and that, at that point, would go to this committee and they would judge what your sort of penalty would be out of that, whether it was suspension or elimination from the league or whatever needed to happen. Uh, and that is a, that's a committee that reports to our board of directors because we are a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, we realized that not all derby drama needed to go to the Code of Conduct Committee. If someone was having a nasty breakup, that wasn't against our rules, it was just awkward. Um, so at that point, our league realized we needed mediation support and we originally started trying to find mediators that would work with us. Then we realized that as a women's empowerment agency, it would be much more beneficial to us if we could handle that training and spread it through the league and really work to change our culture conflict all the way around. At which point, we were lucky enough to be introduced to Annie. Great. And Annie, maybe you could tell, tell us a bit about that, the whole project, how it started, and, and some of the progress to get to the point where you were helping them get from the formal process we just heard about to something more more informal and more capable of dealing with the, some of the other issues that you were highlighting, relationship issues and those things. Yeah, so basically they had already decided, the Rose City Rollers had decided that they wanted a peer mediation program for the reasons that Helvetica just outlined. And so when they came to me, they said, you know, we want a program that's self-sustainable, that's going to work whenever you leave, you know, if you decide to leave or if we don't have a professional mediator available, to be there, we want it to still function and still be an asset to our organization. So I started um, doing research just on organizational conflict resolution issues and mediation techniques. And obviously, I've, I've already been trained in mediation, so I already had that experience. Plus, I had already done a peer mediation program for high school, so I had that experience to pull from as well. And from that, Helvetica and I worked together a lot by ourselves in the beginning to come up with a plan, a project plan, and a curriculum to implement. So some of the things that took place early on were just, you know, attending meetings, you know, going and observing what the derby culture was like, going to bouts, um, meeting with people privately, having, you know, email trails go around about what issues were most important. And then when it came down to really designing the, the project and putting together the curriculum, we really pulled from the skaters, from the from the members of the organization to hopefully get their input. And that worked to some degree. We were lucky enough to get Mahoney on board and a couple other really um, key people to help with some of these issues. And you know, they helped put together role plays, which were great because you know I don't know a ton about I didn't know a ton about roller derby in the beginning. Um, so they really helped you know add that flavor and culture of roller derby into all the conflict resolution curriculum I prepared for them. So at this point, um, we've, we've basically done a six hour training for people to become conflict managers, which is also what we're calling peer mediators in a sense. And now we're working to grow the program so that we can get more conflict managers and people to feel more comfortable with dealing with conflict going forward and really have um, a you know, a, a mediation program that anyone in the in the league can go to if they have an issue they want to deal with. Fantastic. What you've mentioned issues. Can you speak in some specifics about what types of issues seem to be the most prevalent that that you're all dealing with? Sure. Um, let's see. Do you want to maybe explain the one issue from last week? Just surface. I should remember it. Okay. Tried to block out of my memory. <laughs> uh, the, normally, what happens is that there's some sort of conflict between two skaters, sometimes on the same team, sometimes on different teams. In this particular circumstance, our sort of kickoff issue um, was between two different teams. There's a skater on each team that ultimately their conflict conflict impacted the entirety of both of their teams to the point where it became like the sharks and the jets. 
um, not really conducive to an overall league mentality. Uh, we try to say that we're a league team skater or league team individual, so whatever's happening on your team shouldn't impact our league. And instead, we ended up with our board of directors dealing with this, what should have been an easily mitigated situation. Uh, they ended up dealing with it for about six months, and it ultimately derailed a large part of the organization for a long time. Uh, at which point we realized we needed outside help. Because of, one of the best things about Rose City is that we're really good at saying, we're not equipped to deal with this right now. We need to find someone smarter than us to do that. Does that help? So that, yeah. yeah, so that was kind of the kickoff conflict that got me involved. And as you can see, it was it became a much larger issue than probably what some of the things that we're dealing with at this very moment. So sometimes what happens is, you know, two people on the same team break up. They've been in a relationship for five years and they break up. So how do you how do you deal with that? And how are practices gonna go and what kind of agreements can do individuals come to and move forward and still be a part of the league because it's part of their life, it's part of their identity, and then also, you know, still have, you know, a, an okay relationship with the person. And have people been embracing the idea of using some of these peer mediators? Oh, we seem to have a, a little technical difficulty on your guys' side here. Uh, hoping again just to see if, if there has been good reception to doing this uh, from your side. But if we don't come back, uh, we may break this up into a two-parter or have you uh, pop off in a moment. One of the interesting things is from my reflection, hearing what you all have done, is that it's a pretty sophisticated program that you've developed that a lot of sports don't embrace. There's very few sports that have taken such a proactive step to do peer mediation and conflict coaching and, and all this. How, how's the reception been across the organization? Well, it's pretty brand new, um, but the, the people who did attend our first session really um, said that they really enjoyed it, they've spoken well, they've promoted it to other people. We've had a few follow-up sessions and It looks like we're getting a little bit of uh, technical issues here. But why don't we uh, give another try for a moment. You were mentioning uh, that the reception of it so far. Uh, are you back to, to continue on that? Yeah. So here we go. Okay. Yeah, overwhelmingly, there's a lot of excitement about it. We, uh, we had some bad timing issue where we ran up at the, the end of our season at the point when summer hits and everybody wants to take a couple months off. So <laughs> we're going to have to rally a little bit after that. But overwhelmingly, everyone's really excited about the idea. People we talk to in the community are also really excited that we're trying something that isn't, you know, it's not going to happen on your kid's soccer team. Um, one of the things that's sort of interesting about our league is that we're the world's largest roller derby league, and we really do lead a lot of the changes that happen. So hopefully whatever happens in Rose City will go to other leagues, because we'll happily share our program um, to help other leagues improve. Because we are women's empowerment agencies, and there's a lot of conflict born out of being in a women's organization with, I mean, in our situation, we've got over 500 skaters in 18 teams and programs that range from seven to into their 60s. There's a lot of potential drama that can happen within that, but there's also a ton of growth that can happen for everybody with some opportunity. So I, I was really pleasantly surprised not only to learn, learn of your program, but I reached out to a, a friend from Boston who I knew is in a relationship with someone who does roller derby there, and he said that they have a mediation program as well, and I, I thought this was really impressive that this is something that your sport is doing. I, not a lot of sports are doing this. Uh, they tend to be much more towards the formal, and then even when they do informal, it's usually about appointing one person more in an ombuds role, but not em empowering the athletes themselves to be participants. It, what? Any thoughts on from you all about why so progressive in your in your sport compared to others, or, or how you might message <laughs> other sports to, to take on, yeah. Well, my first thought on that is is our 
organization is run by us, 100%. There's not an owner or an, any one vested interest. It's all of us have to, all of us are contributing and we all are required to volunteer and work towards helping our organization. So it's ingrained in the organization for us to be involved in that nature. We're also part of something, it's a, a governing body called the Women's Flat Track Derby Association, and that's the international governing body of roller derby. We were a founding member of that, you know, a million years ago. By a million years ago, I mean, like, what, eight? Our <laughs> uh, <laughs> is only 10 years old, so we've grown really fast. Um, and in the Women's Flat Track Derby Association, the primary thing that's stated all the time is for the skater, by the skater. That's really transitioned a lot to for the community, by the community, because there's so many people in roller derby that aren't skaters. But there's definitely that sense of, like, we want to do something. We need to know how to do it. We need to do it ourselves, because we're all sorts of DIY. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And when you're doing these mediations and you're getting you know, some headway on resolving individual conflicts, is there anything in place to try and learn from those so that you can maybe prevent them from happening as well. I, I know that's always what we're trying to do is not to be in conflicts that derail lives to begin with. What Any, any thoughts on that, uh, Annie or others? Well, I mean, there really, to be honest, there haven't been any formal sit-down mediations yet because I have been the go-to contact so far for all the conflicts that have happened after this first training, and all of them with me having discussions with both parties have resolved in them not feeling the need to have a sit-down mediation. So yes, there have been resolutions, but they happened outside the mediation um, room, which is completely fine if that's how how individuals want to deal with it. So there are there are certain agreements that are taking place, um, but they're pro they're premature to mediation. Those look like think they look like things um, where, for instance, people just agreeing to stay away from each other because they don't get along, or people agreeing to say, okay, well, you can take this responsibility on, and I'll take this responsibility, and okay, we've had this conversation, I feel like we're done with this, you know, we're done with that topic. Um, so that's what it's looked like so far. Because this program is so new, we haven't had actual sit-down mediations yet. We just haven't needed it yet. No. Well, they, well, they're learning right now that it's, available to them and we coming up part of our job and on the committee is coming up with a, a way to to make it widely known that this service is available and then to encourage people to use that service. It's, it's difficult to to think that your conflict warrants mediation. Like some people don't think they should they should need that or that's taking it too far or mm -hmm. so learning that it's available and, and it's an okay process to use it doesn't make your situation you know, bad or you bad to, to get this resolution, this help is is kind of the, what we haven't done yet or we're starting to we're starting the word out there. So there's a lot of conflict coaching going on right now and that, that's where we're at and you know if people feel that they want a mediation then we definitely can offer that service but so far we haven't had to do that which I think Helvetica is thinking that's a good thing. <laughs> Just because we've been able to get people um, to have decent, good relationships working together for the time being. Yeah, uh, how how many people, people figure it out? That's better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. And how, how many people are you hoping to be trained in these skills? And have is it a small subset of your organization, or is it everyone who's an athlete? It's part of your your training to be a, a league member. So there's kind of two answers to that. Uh, ultimately, the original goal was that we would have at least one like trained mediator type person on each team or program. Like I said, that's 18. Uh, we probably wouldn't have the rose petals do it. There's only so much mediation a seven-year-old can handle. Um, but beyond that, we're going to start this whole like learn to deal with your conflict in a productive way training, um, starting at one, two of the different entry points in the organization. One will be the juniors and one is our fresh meat program. So that everyone will have had some sort of They'll have all been touched by the skills at some point in their roller derby journey. That, great. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really, it's really fun to hear. It's it, we we deal with a lot of different leagues and college teams and programs, and uh, I can tell you, it's rare that we come across a group that takes on their own issues quite as proactively as you all have, and and that's really heartening for those of us in the conflict management field to see a group, 
being proactive, trying to train and embrace it, and and also understanding that it takes time to learn these skills. The type of investment you're talking about is exactly what it takes to, to pull it off. Any, any final thoughts from your perspectives that you want to share, either about the league or the experience that you've had before we wrap up? I'm really happy that she did this one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, it never would have happened without Annie. So, well, they're they're just a bit. Row City Rollers is a very progressive organization, so I I felt very honored to be a part of it this whole time. And the different, you know, the different issues that we've dealt with up until now have taken a lot of time. I mean, this is over a year now that I've been working with them, and we're just starting to get this program off the ground. So. Going forward for other leagues, just know that just it takes a it. lot of work and it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of people that you need to volunteer those hours and get involved. But as long as you're patient, it will it will eventually happen and it is happening now. So if there's any other derby leagues watching this, we'll totally share our stuff with you. <laughs> Great. Uh, it's always good to pick up more fans. So if people want to follow all the action that's happening at Rose City Rollers, how do they do that? If they want to follow up on more information about RCR, our website is listed on the screen thingy, so rosecityrollers.com. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter. Uh, our bout schedule is up there. If you ever want to volunteer, you'll be talking directly to me. So. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining today. We really appreciate it, and keep up the good work. Okay. Thanks, Josh, for having thank us. Thank you. Thanks.